reflection. That is the answer to the question on the thumbnail. What does every six-figure Etsy seller do and what do they do well? They reflect, they reflect on the decisions they've made. But don't even think about clicking away just because I let the cat out of the bag and told you the answer right away. In this video, I'm gonna give you some very tangible ways that you can reflect on what you're doing in your Etsy business, the kind of reflections you should be making and how those should be fueling your future decisions. We are better able to apply techniques and strategies to our own lives, in this case, our own shops, when we have very specific examples, and that's just what we're gonna do in today's video. So let's get started. First up, I'm gonna go over something with you not to do before we get to the things you should do, and that is do not get caught up in the trap of saying, but I did everything right. I did everything the Etsy gurus on YouTube are saying to do, and I still didn't make the kind of sales that I wanted to. This leaves absolutely zero space for you to reflect and grow. It turns off your learner switch. And I think this is one of the biggest things holding many people back. Self-reflection enables you to move past just experiencing and just having things happen to you randomly without any rhyme or reason into understanding what is happening and why it is happening. It encourages a level of self-awareness and consciousness about what we are doing and why we are doing it, which enables us to identify areas of improvement and areas of strength as we continue to grow and get better at the skills that we need to get better at in order to be successful. Okay, so if you're still watching, you are ready to reflect. Number two, it's super simple. Assess the strategies you used. Look at the results. Figure out what was working, what wasn't working, and why those things worked or didn't work. Should you abandon the strategy or should you tweak it? If you don't take a minute to assess this, you are just taking wild swings and not learning how to land any punches. We wanna land punches this year. If you're watching this video when it comes out, it's late December, maybe early January. And so I'm reflecting on how my Q4 went and how overall my entire 2023 went and how I can make improvements to do better next year. But at whatever time this, this video lands in front of you, you can use it to reflect as I make reflections weekly and monthly on a very regular basis in my shop. At this point, it is late December when I'm filming this, so you should be itching to get into your analytics and take a look to see what was getting views, what was getting sales, what was getting views and not getting sales, and start identifying reasons why you think these things were happening. Did you try some A-B tests? Did you try looking to see if a certain mock-up did better than the other? You need to go in and compare which one was getting more views, which one was getting more sales overall. Hopefully you didn't just do an A-B test with one or two listings. A-B tests are meant to do across many listings. So in the examples I've given in my channel, and I will link those videos down below, I've done a hundred listings to get a, a good idea of an A-B test and what results are happening so that I can make future decisions. Let's jump into some specific examples from my shop that really show how powerful it is to be reflecting and learning and making decisions as you grow and as you go and how huge the results can become over time. Going back to 2021, my first big Q4. In the beginning of November, I had a couples item that started to sell. I then sat there and thought, well, can I turn this into another niche? I turned it into a family niche listing. I used the same elements, little graphics, and then I expanded the phrases that I was using to fit for a family. It was very different. No one else was doing anything like it quite yet. And the family version of this, it took off like wildfire. I put it out there during Black Friday weekends. I then went on to sell $6,000 worth of profit in the next two weeks of that one item, which was huge, much, 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 much more than anything else I'd ever sold before. I ABC tested the design with different sets of title and tags. That's your SEO, your search engine optimization, and it is how shoppers are finding you. You could see here by the results that I've highlighted at the bottom, and I've spoken about this listing before, that the third one got way better results than the other two. The very first one, that title and tags got me nowhere, zero sales. The second set got me 14 sales, and the third set 
uh, the SEO there got me over a thousand sales. This screenshot is from another video that I did and I'll link that video down below if you wanna know more about this. I've sold it even more times if I were going to go into my analytics and grab these screenshots now. They sold again this past Christmas, or at least that third one did. Reflection is what brought me to the choice to even do this ABC test. So I put a couple's item out, it started to do well. And by well, I mean, it maybe had 20 sales on it, maybe 15 or 16 sales on it even. And I thought, well, is there a way that I can now take that idea? What is it about this listing that I think people are liking? I thought it might be the phrases and or the elements I was using in it. I thought, is there a way that I can now turn that into another niche? And the idea came, sprang to mind that I can now, well, maybe I can make a family listing out of this. I came up with some additional phrases and was able to get the traction that I just showed you on that. Now, moving into 2022, we're going to pay attention to those analytics and we're going to go, okay, this listing did really well. So we, we took a couple's listing that had 24, 25 sales on it. We experimented with the uh, ideas that were in that listing, brought it into another niche, grew it into this new listing that made $6,000 profit on it. And now moving into 2022, we're going to reassess. We're going to reflect again. Okay, what is it that people were liking about that listing? I'm not 100% sure whether it was the phrases or whether it was the graphics. All right, so next steps. I took that chunk of SEO that was doing well and the mock-up photo from that third one that I was showing you earlier, and I doubled down on that in 2022. I took the elements that I used in that listing and I made at least 30 designs with those elements, all in different sub niches of Christmas. If you want a nice resource with lots of sub niches, all the ones that I use, then I will leave this resource linked down below. It's a resource for Q4 and I have lots of different sub niches that I do work in that are proven to sell well. And you could take one idea, change something about it and bring it into another niche and i will show you an example of that in just a minute so like i said i did about 30 listings with those phrases all done up really different looking with different types of graphics in them and i also did at least 30 listings that were not those phrases but used those fonts or used the embellishments or the graphics that i had been using in that original couples listing that grew into that family listing so now most of these didn't really go anywhere. Some of them got a couple sales, some of them didn't get any sales, but one of them in 2022 got a whole bunch of sales. And it wasn't the phrases like I originally had hypothesized. I thought that would be, I thought one of the listings that would take off if one of them took off would be one of the versions of this that I did with the phrases. It was actually one of the other family sets I put together utilizing these same graphics and fonts, but were, was in a whole different sub niche of Christmas. I was A-B testing with a lot of my items at the time, so I listed that family item twice, and all I changed was the SEO. I was messing with my title and my tags. That's your SEO, your search engine optimization phrases, the way that people on Etsy, what they're typing into the search bar and how they are actually getting connected with your listing if you also had those search terms in your listing. So I tried two different sets and I'm showing them here on screen. And the first one there that you see where I have an A for the A-B test, that first chunk of SEO that I use, I sold 737 shirts through that listing. Now that's up until now, I just pulled this screenshot. So that 2022 and 2023, it's still selling. The second one, you could see that it has sold almost, not quite double, 1,199 sales have gone through it with $38,233 as the revenue. And I had actually put this listing out, this design out three times. I did an A-B test with the SEO. I did have a hypothesis that one particular set of that SEO would do better. And so I took that set of SEO and I did an additional A-B test with two different mock-ups in the front. One of the mock-ups 
did way better than the other because here we have a third listing with this design. I've used the same title and tags in the two listings that I'm showing up here. It's the same design that we've been talking about and I just changed that initial mock-up photo to a different mock-up photo. And we have this additional listing now that has a revenue of $52,716. So this one design has had all this revenue coming through these three separate listings. Before I share my reflections on these analytics and how that fueled decisions coming into 2023, I want to address something real quick. I just want to mention here really fast. I know that some people are probably thinking, yeah, well, look at those big results. Of course, you doubled down on something that was making that much money. And I want to address that real fast. If I could go back to 2021 and say, hey, Shauna, hey, your future self is going to be making a YouTube video trying to inspire others at what is possible here. Save all your failed attempts so you can show them those too. I would go back and tell myself that, but I don't, I didn't save those things. A lot of those listings that I was failing at, they're gone. They're, I've deleted them. I don't have them around anymore and I don't remember exactly all of those failed attempts, but for every thing that I am showing you that did well, I have like 40 things behind it that are crumpled up sitting on the floor of failure. So I have made decisions based off each of those failures that have led to this. The listing that led me to making this family listing, I think I sold like 25 shirts out of it or something like that. So, and it wasn't just that one time reflecting and making that decision. It was numerous times. There were so many times, oh, I got a few sales, let me try this. I got a couple views, let me try this. I got a couple favorites, let me try this. And all of those little tiny stabs and steps led to other bigger examples where the success is more highlighted like the one I'm showing you now. But please don't think that my journey has been full of examples like this. This is just a big example to show you of how reflecting on something can grow into something so much more. Do not let yourself get away with the thought of, well, I'm doing everything that everyone says I should be doing. So why isn't it working out for me? That is a victim mentality. By doing that, you are discounting what you are capable of through persistent, consistent work and making decisions based off self-reflection of your efforts and of what's actually happening in your Etsy shop. I cannot tell you how many afternoons I came home from school because I used to be a fourth grade teacher and I had no sales six months in, seven months in, not making consistent sales. And so I was sitting there reflecting on, okay, what got favorited today? Let me figure out why they favorited this. And I was making decisions based on those thoughts because that's the data that I had to work with at the time. I just want to invite you real quick to go down and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you want to know more about print on demand and more about selling on Etsy because that's what we talk about on this channel. Or if you're a regular here and you're enjoying this content and you are hoping I'll make more content like it later, take a second to give it a big thumbs up and boop that like button. Just a reminder, not all of my stuff wound up doing this, but if you make great reflections and decisions based on those reflections, back, backing it up to the beginning of your shop, oh, I'm getting views on this one. Why? Let me do more of that. Oh, I'm getting some sales on this one. Why? Let me do more of that. How can I do more of that? Is it the phrase? Is it the graphics? Is it the font? Trying all of them out. Is it the SEO? Is it the mock-up photo? And as you continue to grab data and reflect on it and make new decisions based on the mountains of data that you wind up getting after doing this month after month, your decisions get really, really good. And if you make enough tries, like I said, I've got a lot of failure behind each of these great examples. Lots and lots of failed attempts, failed listings behind each of these great examples. But if you keep learning from each of those failed attempts and keep learning from the little places that you keep grabbing some traction, each try that you do will have a better chance than the last one. Let's take a quick peek from the analytics and the decision made from these analytics in 2023. I put a new design out, not related to the research I was just talking about on this other design and how that one built up but a totally different design out and it started to do well. And so I said, okay, let me go ahead and pull this into another sub niche 
of Christmas. Again, I'll leave that resource links down below if you want to know all those sub-niches that I like to try out. And then that sub-niche started to do well. So when you really take a look at something that's working for you and try to figure out other creative ways to continue making money on that idea, then it is definitely worth consistently doing that in your shop. If you are consistently reflecting and making decisions based off those reflections, over time you are going to find that you are going to be able to turn snowflakes into snowballs and then you are going to be able to create an avalanche and at any point if the idea is creeping up in your head that well i'm doing everything i'm supposed to be doing and it's just not working dismiss that that is not a six-figure seller's way of thinking channel your inner six-figure seller self and make those decisions based on what you're seeing happening in your shop no matter how small you're starting out whether it's just that one listing that's got that one view well then you've got something to work with and you know what you need to do i am going to give you a specific example of how i would take a listing or a design that i have in my shop that's doing well i'm going to show you a listing that's doing well and we're going to talk about how we would grab that and put it in other sub niches before I do story time for just a second, one of the things that prompted me to think about this and to bring this video to you was, well, first, we're coming up on New Year's and we should be reflecting on things that we did well this year and things that we want to change and do better for next year. And that applies to our Etsy shops, right? And the other thing is I recently started, well, this year I started taking boxing lessons with my friend Mike. And we were there at boxing the other day and our instructor, Mario, who is awesome, he holds his gloves up and he calls out these moves to us and we have to punch. So we're there the other day and I'm getting a little bit better and he's calling out the punches really fast and he's got the gloves up and I'm, he's giving me the strategies I'm supposed to be doing and applying and he has to keep repeating himself because I'm not applying them every time when I'm in the situation, just like I know what happens when we're doing our Etsy shops also. And as he was moving really quickly and, and we were really getting a lot of momentum going, I kind of had a moment where I felt like I was in a girl fight and I was just going like this. And I felt it, I knew I did not look cool. And I was still landing the punches, but I felt completely out of control. And I hear my friend Mike start laughing in the background and then Mario starts laughing and I'm like, oh yeah. I look exactly how I think I look right now, like I am in a wild girl fight. So Mario stopped and said, hey, if you feel like you're out of control and you're just, you're not having any plan coming in, take a second, pivot back on your foot, get out of reach from, you know, we're taking boxing lessons, so get out of reach from my opposer's swing, right? Take a second, get back there and make a plan. Like take a second to recoup before you come back in instead of, continuing to push forward and being out of control. And I thought, wow, that is a lot like our Etsy shops. There have been many moments where I felt like I was taking wild girl swings in my Etsy shop, just trying anything and everything, but it's better if we just take a second. Okay, we want growth. Let's take a minute, listen to content, readdress the strategies that maybe you forgot to employ, look at your analytics, make a plan. And, in, and not to say that you won't get into another frenzy or a moment where you feel like you're taking wild swings, but remember to take a breath, take a beat, go back to learning, go back to listening, go back to instruction, look at your analytics, make a new plan, make informed decisions. Next, let's take a look at some tangible examples. Now I've really focused in this video on how I have looked at my analytics and what kinds of things have gone through my mind to help me go from a few views to thousands of dollars of revenue in growing ideas or listings in my shop. When you're reflecting, that could also go with taking a, a more honest look at the efforts that you put in. So, you know, if you put like 20 listings in in a month and we're expecting some great results from that, that might not have been so reasonable of you. So maybe you would look at that and that would be another place where you could reflect and go, okay, well, everyone that's sharing their stories on YouTube sounds like they're doing a lot more effort than 20 listings a month, right? So, so that would be another way to reflect and really taking an honest look at your efforts. All right, so third up, let's go ahead and take a, a look at some tangible examples of how you might do what it was that I kind of focused on in this video and take a listing that's doing well and, or that's getting views or that's getting some traction and grow it into more in your shop. Let's take a look at this listing here. Let's pretend this is the listing in our shop 
and it is getting some traction. So we're trying to figure out what is it about this listing that is getting eyeballs on it. Maybe it's getting sales. Maybe it's a bestseller for us. How do we capitalize on those ideas? How do we grow from there? Well, if I were looking at this in my shop, first of all, it's custom. It's a customized name. That's probably a big reason it's making sales. The next element we see is that it's got the really fun letters. So the first thing I would be thinking if this was my listing was how do I make more money or grow this idea even more so? So we could make a family listing out of it possibly. So maybe we make one that says mom, one that says dad. Maybe we do sister and brother or instead of sister and brother for the kids, we actually do the customized names like this. That's going to be a completely different type of listing than this one with different search engine optimization, different title and tags that you'd be attaching to it. Perhaps we could take it into yeah, a different niche a re and take a religious spin on this. Can we do a Christmas Christmassy theme like this, but then put a religious theme on it. So maybe we're going to add a cross somewhere in there or the letters would be a mix. Maybe we could find some cool letters. I use Creative Fabrica. I'll leave a link to them down in the description as well as a link to that resource where a lot of these niches that I'm mentioning are mentioned in that resource. So you have it down plus a bunch of others. So maybe we could take that religious, a religious angle on this and maybe we could also find a font that we could mix it up with that maybe had a religious theme with it. Or perhaps we just put, a, we find a nice graphic of a cross and we kind of lay it, you know, maybe at a diagonal at, on the last letter leaning on it or something like that. Or perhaps we take a teacher spin on this. That's one of the niches that I list in my shop. So I might write the teacher's name out on this or to make it a little easier for myself for personalization, maybe I write the word teacher like this and then underneath write the teacher's name in like maybe a nice script font. Or perhaps we take a couple's spin on this. Maybe we write Mrs. on one shirt and Mr. on the other shirt. Or we write the girl's name and the guy's name on the t-shirts. And then we put a mock-up photo where it shows a couple wearing the shirt. And of course we have titles and tags that are targeting couples at Christmas that want to match. And one more example of like probably 50 that are floating around in my head. And it might be easier if you had a list of all of these sub niches kind of jotted down. Again, I have my resource in the description or you can make your own, just start a Word document, jot down all the ones I've mentioned so far. And as you encounter listings or other people talking about this, continue adding to your list. Taking the couples theme, you don't have to stop at couples. Now let's do a specific sub niche of couples and we could do a mom to be in a dad to be shirt and maybe mom and dad are the ones with those large letters and then the rest of the phrase that you're writing on the shirt to show that they're expecting a baby is in another font. Just some ideas for you on how I would use what I know about this listing, if it was doing well in my shop, how I would then use it to see how I could make more money with it or get more views, more visits, which will lead to making money with it. Reflection helps us hold ourselves accountable for the work we did or did not do and gives us something tangible we can choose to change or to double down on so we are making our own luck rather than chalking it up to the Etsy gods. It takes you out of a woe is me attitude, that victim mentality or that feeling of hopelessness and helps you take power back of your own destiny. I don't know one successful person that does not reflect on the past to help them make better decisions for their future or that has that victim mentality. I heard someone recently say, it is not about doing our best, it is about doing what is required. That was Alex Hermosi and I thought that was such a cool quote. It is not about doing our best, it is about doing what is required. Figure out what is required in order to achieve your goals and that is what needs to be done. We have got this. Let's start the new year out right by taking a minute to really reflect on how we did this year and why we did that way this year so we can take action steps to move ourselves in the directions that we want to go. I'll help you reflect on your ad strategy here because this is a great time to sit back and look at that. But of course, not until after that tip from Tucker. Tucker, take it away.